Messiah gives us free health care and free birth control for women because they can't buy their own birth control because it's so complicated. Oh, you can scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, and moan. Dig in your heels and hold on tight. You can shove your opinion up your ass. That way Obama's cock has something to keep it company. Either you are wrong or I am right. And don't forget, my friends and my enemies, the ever-present, the most likely third possibility, you are wrong and I am right. The crowd goes wild as we move into another year of Stating the Obvious podcast. Just past the 11-year anniversary. Yes, it's a glorious, glorious morning. Our far glorious, glorious leader, Hussein Obama. Meanwhile, this is Stating the Obvious podcast, the weapons platform from which I launched the cruise missile of my intellect that moves in on and destroys statists all around the world. Whether you're a femistatist, statist, a homo statist, a petty statist, a tranny statist, an statheist, doesn't matter what kind of statist you might be. And statists come in all kind of flavors, all different types. There's a lot of diversity among statists. That's the great thing about statists is they're so diverse, right? There's all these different size and shape and color and gender, which of course, actually, we know all of those things are just social constructs. We learned that in the previous edition of Stating the Obvious, where we read an article about a college student who has used all of her life experience and wisdom to determine that there are things such as gender and race and sex and sexuality. These are all social constructs that don't actually exist. Anyway, speaking about non-existent... Oh, thank you. I am the Great One himself. I am the founder of Cynical Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com on the interwebs. In the control room on the other side of the glass over there, she's the lovely and adorable Randy reminding me to do the introductory stuff. <clears throat> you can email us as God, dog spelled backwards, God, at CYNLIBSOC.com. And the theme song for Stating the Obvious podcast is You Know I'm Right by David Gilmour off his 1984 album About Face. And yesterday, was it yesterday, Randy? Yesterday was the 11th anniversary of Stating the Obvious podcast. And I, of course, have been on the internet. Cynical Libertarian Society founded and began the website in the year 1999. Go fuck yourselves. Anyway, speaking of stupid shit. Was I speaking of stupid shit? I'm just babbling. It's early in the morning. I'm still drinking coffee. This is how things roll around here. Last night, I recorded a podcast with a martini in my hand. This morning, I'm recording a podcast with a cup of coffee in my hand. All right. So I something in my hand. A lot of times, it's my dick. All right. Here we go. As long as it doesn't end up in my mouth, I'm okay. My, my hand or my dick. Anyway, let's get on with it instead of just fucking around like I usually do. We are reading some more stuff from the CSU Collegian. For those of you who knew the podcast, that's the student newspaper at Colorado State University here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins where I live. Survey asks students about gender inclusive signage. Now as we read this, keep in mind this is the smartest generation ever. These are the people who are going to change the world. Oh yes. We're going to find out what's important to these people. All right, here we go. Converting all sex-specific single-stall restrooms on campus to gender-neutral is the newest step forward in Colorado State University's efforts to become more gender-inclusive. Now, if it's a single-stall bathroom, that means there's only one fucking hole in there, right? There's only one toilet, so one person can use it at a time. So, instead of all this debate that you're going to hear about, I'm kind of jumping the gun, Why don't they just put the fucking sign on the door that has both the male and the female on it and says bathroom so that it indicates anybody could use it, right? So you got a a bathroom that has the little boy sign on it and you have a bathrooms that have the little girl sign on them 
And then you could just have bathrooms that have the boy and the girl sign. And that is an indicator. Anybody with any common sense, which of course excludes almost every millennial, knows that if you see the door, you see a door and it's got the little sign on it that has the boy symbol and the girl symbol. Everybody knows, who isn't stupid, who's not a millennial, everybody knows that is a fucking single whole bathroom and that anybody can use it regardless of gender, regardless of what you have between your legs or what you think you have between your legs or what you wish you had between your legs or what kind of hormone treatment you're on or how many 10 year old children you had sex with or how many times you were sexually abused when you were a child or whether or not your sister had sex with you and you know, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. There's only one goddamn hole in there and so there's only going to be one person in there at a time and therefore anybody can use it. Anybody. Doesn't fucking matter. Does not fucking matter. You could be a fucking alien from another planet and have some weird sex organ nobody's ever heard of. You can still go in there and take a dump. Doesn't matter. Through this action, there is now a place for everyone to use the restroom without questioning of sex or gender identity. Students are working to create standard signage across campus for new gender inclusive restrooms. Standard signage for gender inclusive restrooms already exist. But no, you see, that has the little boy symbol and the little girl symbol on it, and that's oppressive. We have to, this is what's important to millennials, is creating a new sign, a new symbol to put on bathroom doors so that people who are confused about what gender they are will know that they can use this bathroom. Art, well, actually, I don't need to ask this question because the question I was about to ask is actually going to get answered in this article. I was going to say, are people who are unclear about what gender they are actually so dumb that they can't figure out which bathroom to use? The answer to that question, sadly enough, for the millennials, is yes. Yes, they are. Okay, the subcommittee for this project Come on. There's a fucking, they form somebody, you know, I don't know who formed this subcommittee. There's a subcommittee to figure out what kind of sign to put on the bathroom doors of the single stall bathrooms that could be used by anybody, regardless of gender, which is a social construct anyway. My God. Right, and I mean, this is consuming resources. All these people believe in global warming. Those little plastic signs that have boys and girls on them already exist. They're going to create new signage and they're going to utilize electricity and resources and carbon footprint and global warming, but no, they don't give a fuck because it's all about their feelings and also because, of course, inherently they understand that global warming doesn't really exist. It's just a weird religion. It's like religious people who claim that God exists and if you sin, you're going to go to hell, but then they go out and they sin anyway because they know deep down inside, they know that there's no invisible man who lives in the sky, so it doesn't really fucking matter. The subcommittee for this project created a survey with three sign alternatives and is seeking student feedback. The survey is available until November the 6th, hey, you still have time to take the survey, and can be found at http studentvoice.com slash col slash gender inclusive restroom survey. About 54% of transgender or non-binary people, which of course transgenderism doesn't really exist, that's a social construct, or non-binary, and of course non-binary people, well, they don't really exist because if the binary is a social construct, then non-binary is also a social construct. 
About 54% of transgendered or non-binary people experience adverse health effects from avoiding the use of sex-specific public restrooms, according to the Williams Institute Center for Transgender Equality. Shay Tretton, a transgender CSU student, says it comes as a relief to have inclusive restrooms available to him now. <sighs> Quote, Normally, what I do is just avoid going to bathrooms on campus, which can, and has happened to me before coming here, give you a urinary tract infection. Holding in your pee is not beneficial at all, so that's one of the really big reasons I think there should be gender-neutral restrooms on campus, unquote, Trenton said. The gender-neutral bathrooms are already there. All they're doing is changing the fucking sign on the door. Second of all, if you can't figure out which... You're holding your pee because you can't figure out which bathroom to go into? And what's the big deal about going into the wrong, a, a bathroom? First of all, you go in the stall, you close the fucking door. Nobody can see if you've got a cock or a cunt. Nobody knows what you're doing in there unless they're peeking through the cracks. And second of all, if the millennials are so fucking inclusive and tolerant and diverse, why do the other people in there give a shit? As I've, I've talked about this before, but not for a long time, I used to live in H-Town, Houston, Texas. And in Houston, there was... Long before any of this shit was being shoved down your throat, there's a lot of homosexuals in Houston. I've partied at gay bars. I've talked about that before. And I've seen a lot of transsexuals. And out in Houston, you're in places, you're in you know museums, you're at concert halls, you're at uh, the Astrodome. Well, wherever the fuck I was at, there have been many times I saw people coming into the men's bathroom who were very obviously women dressed in men's clothing. And as we all know, I'm racist, sexist, homophobic, all that other shit. Not one time did I give a fuck. I had not one fuck to give that there was a woman in the man's bathroom dressed as a man or a man dressed as a woman. Not one time did I give a fuck. It's like, okay, they're in here, they're taking a piss. Who gives a shit? I mean, when I was, I remember one time, and this doesn't even involve transsexuals, just... I was at the Astrodome. I don't remember what I was doing. I think it was the rodeo when Frankie Beverly and Mays were playing. And anyway, we're, we're in the guys are in line to go in there and take a piss. And the or, excuse me, the guys are not in line. We're kind of in line because we're fast. But the women's room, there's this giant line. And so we're in there. I'm taking a piss at the urinal. And this chick comes strolling in and goes into one of the stalls to take a leak. Not and not again. Not even a trans, just a normal woman. Oh my God! I I imply trannies are not normal. Oh, I'm so hateful. Anyway, just a normal chick. She walks in the men's bathroom to take a piss. There's all these men in there. We're standing at the urinal. We're pissing. There's guys waiting to piss at the. Not one man gave a fuck. Not one man said a single fucking word. There, not one fuck was given. That. There was a woman taking a piss in the men's bathroom because she didn't want to fucking wait in line. Maybe she had to go really bad. Not one fuck given. Not one. I have been in many public bathrooms in Houston, Texas with people who were transsexuals. Never once gave a fuck. It's a bathroom. You're in there to take a shit or to take a piss. That's what it's for. It's not a goddamn big deal. Unless you're a fucking millennial. Unless you're a fucking millennial tranny. And in that case, you're too fucking stupid to figure out which bathroom to use so you hold your fucking piss and you get a urinary tract infection which I then have to subsidize the treatment of via Obamacare. You're not the smartest generation ever. You're not. Okay? You're a bunch of motherfucking idiots. Okay. Currently, there are about 58 single stall restrooms available for use on campus, but they are not labeled as gender inclusive. Then what the fuck are they labeled as 
and just put the goddamn little boy slash girl sign on there. God damn it. This is, this is like complicated shit for millennials. This is how they think they're going to change the world. Danny Nicobumas or something, one of the students advocating for gender-neutral bathrooms across campus, said this step in awareness of transgender and non-binary community is something that she thinks students will be welcome to. Quote, I think with our generation, we're very accepting of other people, and I think other people want to see this movement and see this change. Unquote. You're not accepting of other people. Anybody who has any fun, show, if I bring you somebody who doesn't believe in global warming, you're not going to be accepting of them. If you listen to this podcast where I explain to you, stick a little fucking boy slash girl sign on the door and be done with it, this is not a fucking issue that requires subcommittees and all of a sudden, you won't fucking be accepting of that. You're not accepting of anybody who doesn't have the exact same fucking belief system you have. Shut the fuck up about how goddamn accepting and inclusive you are because you're just a goddamn dumb bitch. Nicomandius Dumbass, or whatever the fuck her name is, and Kelly Connor, a senior studying health and human sciences, started this movement when they created a petition advocating for best practice policies for gender-inclusive facilities, which include gender-inclusive restrooms around comp- campus designated for anyone to use. Again, this is complicated shit for them. Using the bathroom. Taking a piss is so complicated for millennials that they have to create petitions to write down best practice policies for figuring out how to urinate. Because millennial trannies are so goddamn dumb, they can't figure out which bathroom to use, so they just fucking hold it. Smartest generation ever. All right, what's next on this show? I'm pulling shit out of the pile. Hang on. God damn it. And do we want to do this? Let's do this. This is a long one. (laughs) That's what she said. (laughs) Oh, all right. Students offer interdisciplinary approaches to climate action. (laughs) Oh, oh, global warming. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, it's called climate change now because it's not actually getting any warmer. Even though every year is the warmest year on record by 0. 0.0001 degrees centigrade. Heather Hackman founded the Hackman Consulting Group in 2005 and now consults nationally on issues of deep diversity, equity, and social justice. Equity? According to the Hackman Consulting Group, quote, a social justice framework must be the guiding lens through which we as a nation and global community address the mitigation and adoption responses to 21st century climate issues, unquote. Yes, everything must go through the filter of social justice. CSU students said they are familiar with the concept of climate change. (laughs) Oh God, they're so fucking dumb. I mean, you've only had climate change, aka global warming, shoved down your throat for the entire 12 years of public education and, you know, media propaganda and all this other shit and however long you've been in college. The CSU students, well, they're familiar with the concept of climate change. Wow, they're so brilliant. CSU students said they are familiar with the concept of climate change and the need for sustainability, while, of course, at the same time consuming massive amounts of resources with, you know, basically being alive means consuming resources. Mmm, coffee but had not heard of climate justice before and are unfamiliar with Hackman's argument. 
Hackman argues that social justice is the only lens through which we can look to find answers to such questions as what does, sustainability, what does a sustainable society look like? How do we deepen our accountability for what is going on? And when we talk about sustainability, what exactly are we trying to sustain? Well, what we are trying to sustain is that which all statists need in order for the state to be sustainable. We need to sustain victimhood. We need to sustain oppression. We need to sustain inferiority. We need to sustain failure. Because remember, my friends, if you don't need the state, the state doesn't need you. And if you are not a victim, if you are not a failure, if you are not incompetent, then why do you need the state? You don't. That is what ultimately must be sustained. And that is why the social justice aspect of this is so important. Because social justice is a social construct through which we take all these people who are social constructs and turn them into victims. Victimhood, of course, being a social construct. And we talk about how heterosexual white men who work for a living are oppressing all of these people, even though heterosexuality, whiteness, and manness are all social constructs, according to ethnic studies students who have no life experience whatsoever. John Morris, a senior business marketing and communications major, suggested that cooperation is key within a sustainable society. This college student is suggesting that cooperation is important. This is what passes for intelligence in the medicated generation, the smartest generation ever. Hey, I, 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 think, I think cooperation might be important. Wow, man, this is, these are just like these fantastic, who would have ever thought that cooperation has value? Oh, wait a minute. Every anarcho-capitalist who advocates a voluntary society and markets because voluntary societies and marketplaces require cooperation. Oh, wow. I, well, oh, hey, somebody thought of that previously. Oh, my goodness. Quote, well, first we'd probably have to all get along and agree on something. Oh, we have to agree on... Okay, well, I... Uh, I agree you're an idiot, but I'm sure you don't agree with that. We all have to get along and agree on something. So that's the first step towards sustainability is all getting along and agreeing on something. That sounds like a, a phrase from an Obama speech. Those are words, but they don't mean anything. We have so many different regulations for different countries. We can't even agree on whether climate change exists or not. It'd have to be a global agreement and then work from there. So in other words, we need a world government to force a global agreement upon everybody. Because there's no other way you're going to get every person on the planet Earth to agree with something unless you're using the threat of force to force them to agree to this. Or unless, of course, what they're agreeing to is actually real. For example, everybody agrees that the sun is in the sky. Everybody agrees that gravity creates a situation in which water runs downhill. Right? These things are evident. They can be supported with objective empirical data and testing. People agree on things that fall into those categories. Global warming is, of course, a religion, not a science and therefore people don't agree on it. Hackman noted that 97% of climate scientists agree that climate change exists and is driven by human activity in her address Thursday. She, of course, did not present any information on where she got this number from. And of course, there's also the fact that just because people agree on something doesn't mean it's true. This is philosophical fallacies 
101. Allison Thompson, a junior economics major, said she is familiar with the concept of climate justice and sees agriculture as a central aspect to creating more sustainable and equitable societies. Again, she is a she's a junior. Ooh, she has so much life experience. Let's, let's hear what this person with all this life experience and knowledge and wisdom has to say about sustainable and equitable societies, shall we? Quote, I think a sustainable society, sustain, no. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. I think a sustainable society would be one where every country is able to, at least for the most part, feed their citizens, and conduct trade with countries that have crops that they are unable to grow. I think that would be, I think that would intersect with the concept of social justice because if every country could sustain their citizens, they would be more willing and able to solve problems of equality. Okay, first of all, the thing that stops people from getting food is not the availability of food. So this thing, if all, every country could, and again, remember, countries don't really exist. Countries are not people. They're like corporations. Well, the United States did this, Exxon did. No, countries and corporations are not people. They're legal fictions, okay? If every country could feed their citizens and conduct trade with countries that have crops. Oh, wait, trade? You mean like markets? No, 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 see, we can't have markets because well, markets, that's capitalism. And capitalism is racist, sexist, and homophobic. <sighs> Being able to... F so then the... No, look. If the countries... The, if their countries aren't people. Again, why can't people feed themselves? This is what this boils down to. If countries could feed their citizens... Again, notice how... She looks at the world. If the country, which means the government, if the government could just feed its citizens, then the government could do other stuff. What if the government got the fuck out of the way and let people have, figure out how to feed themselves? Again, I've talked about this one before. Have you noticed how humans are the only animals on the planet Earth who are too stupid to get their own food without help from fucking government? Zebras, mountain lions, tigers, starfish, whales, monkeys, amoebas, earthworms, fireflies, honeybees. None of them need a centralized government to pass laws and put them in cages and regulate their activity and actually tell them what to eat and not eat so that they can get food. We see here, yet again, massive failure of natural selection. Humans are so fucking stupid. Humans have been bred by the state to be so fucking stupid, they can't even feed themselves. They need the government to provide them with food. If only the government could provide everybody with which the government can. I mean, there's not a government on the planet Earth. You show me the poorest fucking country. You show me whatever country in Africa or wherever it may be where the most people are laying in the street and starving to death. I promise you the government of that country has automobiles, aircraft, helicopters, machine guns. They're paying people to be in the army. They're paying police officers. They can buy ammunition. They can buy handcuffs. They can afford to run prisons. There's plenty of fucking money to feed people. There's plenty of fucking money for that. Blah, 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 blah. Now we're talking about uh, Hannah Durkee. She's a sophomore. Ooh, she's experienced in life. Human Development and Family Studies major. God. Durkee, Hannah Durkee said that more needs to be done to educate children about climate and social justice issues. Quote, 
I think that educating people when they're younger will help us address climate because I think you can really impact kids, especially in elementary school, because then they can make a difference when they're our age or even younger." Unquote. No, and Hitler figured this out too. You get the kids when they're young. You get the kids when they're manipulable. You get the kids when they're too young to have too many critical thinking skills. You get the kids when they're young and you brainwash them and then they're fucked up for life. This is why somebody like Hannah wants to start telling, you know, fucking elementary school children that gender is a social construct and heterosexual white men, even though man, men is a social construct, are oppressing everybody and global warming is happening and we're all going to die and it's because the governments can't feed their people because heterosexual white men who work for a living are evil and are oppressing these governments and all this other shit. Because a fucking grown-up with critical thinking skills isn't going to believe all of this shit. That's why, and this, my God, when, you, when I see women like this, she's majoring in human development and family studies. You know, she's going to get some job as a fucking school counselor or some shit like that, providing she gets a job other than delivering pizza. And she's going to be brainwashed. She's going to be feeding this shit to these poor little children who are not experienced enough in life to know they're being bullshitted. And again, this is why this is the cynical libertarian society. This is why you should buy the book Enjoy the Decline by Aaron Clary because the United States of America as a nation state, as a culture, as a society, however you want to look at it, we as a people, this place, this North America, the society, we're doomed. We're fucking doomed. It's like the fall of Rome. We are fucking doomed. There's no getting out of it. All these fucking anarcho capitalists out there who are telling you, yes, people are more interested in freedom than ever. We're winning. No, we are not winning. Freedom is not winning. The non-aggression principle is not winning. The marketplace is not winning. Respecting other people's ownership of property is not winning. We are losing. The society is collapsing. Everybody's a victim. Everybody wants a parasite. Everybody wants to be a parasite and a victim. We are not fucking winning. All right. Austin Blaho, a junior mathematics major, emphasized collective action as a method for mitigating climate change and addressing social justice issues. Quote, A sustainable society, I feel, and I have no evidence for this, but I have feelings, a sustainable society, I feel, means putting the environment in front of ourselves a little bit, a little bit, not a lot, right? So we should put the we should put the environment in front of ourselves. Except, you know, if I want to like travel to the beach for spring break, then I should be able to get on an airplane that spews jet fuel exhaust and fly across the country, right? And maybe, in terms of the way we live, not being quite as selfish for the better good of the environment. I think the biggest thing with, I think the biggest thing with that is to spread the word out there that we need change, change, and this is going to happen. Try to get everyone on board and whatnot. Okay, so how many cell phones have you gone through in your life? And how much environmental destruction has been done by those cell phones? So whenever you hear some global warming wacko talking about how yeah, we need to be a little less selfish. Okay, how many cell phones? How many computers? Again, just the, the consumption of resources that the average global warming wacko goes through. Do you own an automobile? You know, well, but I would be inconvenienced if I didn't have a car. Well, wait a minute. I thought we were supposed to not be so selfish. I thought we were supposed to care about the environment. Right? It always sounds good to say shit like, you know, I've, putting the environment in front of ourselves and the way we live not being quite as selfish. You know, it sounds good to say that, but do you notice these people don't do anything significant? to reduce the amount of resources that they consume. Oh, I threw my plastic bottle in the recycling bin. Oh, whoop the fucking do Blaho explained that mathematics could be used to calculate carbon emissions and reduce or eliminate outputs in order to address climate changes. So did you know that mathematics can be used to do mathematical calculations? This is, this, it was said, this was said by a member of the smartest generation ever. 
mathematics can be used to do mathematical calculations. This is a stunning revelation. Quote, we need to really put it on everyone to know that this isn't going to happen unless everybody's 100% committed, unquote, Blaho said. Now, of course, Blaho has a cell phone. He has an automobile. He utilizes electricity. But you see, everybody needs to be 100% committed, except for him, because he would be inconvenienced if he didn't have a cell phone, a computer, electricity, refrigeration, automobile. But see, other people should be 100% committed. According to Hackman, social justice is inherently hopeful. Quote, we can't have equality until we have equity first, unquote, Hackman said. No, social justice is not inherently hopeful. Social justice, by definition, requires a victim. If there is no victim, then there's no social justice to seek. And social justice is like anything else. Be a, you know, a government, a corporation, whatever. It doesn't want to scale back. It wants to expand. It wants to bring more social justice. When I say social justice, like it's a person. People who believe in social justice want to do more to bring more social justice. To bring more social justice, you have to find more victims. If you run out of victims, social justice warriors no longer have anything to fight for. So the idea that social justice is hopeful is absolute fucking nonsense. Social justice, by definition, requires victims. And if you run out of victims, you have to create more victims. Randy, how are we on time? All right, I'm looking at the pile trying to judge what I should try to do here. All right, here we go. Let's do this. This looks good. Talking about oversensitive. Mm. Water. Yummy. Sensitivity. Oh, my God. They call it, they're, they're so fucking sensitive. Now, listen to this. ASCSU's executive order for a veterans task force creates conflict. For those of you who are normal and don't know about this shit, ASCSU is the Associated Students of Colorado State University. It is essentially a bunch of college students pretending to be a government because that's just, you know, you can't have anything. Nothing can exist without a government to oversee it. So these are a bunch of college students who form the student government at CSU and do nothing other than debate about stupid shit like this. President of the ASCSU University, President of the Associated Students of Colorado State University, Jason Swajrick or something, made an executive order over the summer that upset some students who are part of the campus Adult Learners and Veterans Services Office. Swajrick has since rescinded the order. Oh my goodness, thank God, we were in a tailspin there. The order would have formed a task force in ASCSU focused specifically on the ALVS, that's the Adult Learners and Veteran Services, office and its veteran students. It would, quote, determine if there are inherent failings within the office, whether within staff conduct or initiatives, and provide a spectrum of recommendations to overcome them unquote, according to the order. So see, he was going to do something to determine if a... I'm thinking if this is part of a, the veteran, Adult Learners and Veterans Services Office. So I don't think it's part of the Associated Students of Colorado State University. I think it's a separate thing. Anyway, he was going to form a task force to determine, essentially, if there was any room for improvement in the ALVS office. Of course, this created a firestorm because how dare you suggest that the ALVS office could use some improvement? How dare you fucking suggest? That is fucking racist, sexist, and homo-fucking-phobic. The order was a 
The order was to call ASCSU to action, so I Drick said it was created to determine what we can do for veterans and what we can do to make this notion that we're one of the most veteran-friendly universities reflect in real life. The task force was supposed to help students involved with the ALVS that felt they weren't getting help they needed and felt they were dissatisfied with the office's services, according to students. Cydric spoke to Cydric spoke to over the summer. However, many in the ALVS office see the executive order as unprofessional as Cydric's part. Dwayne Hansen, a student staff member for ALVS, a student staff member. So this office is being staffed by students, right, with all their life experience. Like if I'm, I am a veteran, I've served in the military, I'm an adult, I'm a grown up, I have a job, I'm not on welfare. If I went to the ALVS office, for some assistance because I'm an adult learner and a veteran and the person who's staffing the place is a goddamn college student. Do you, you really expect me to take a fucking college? How are you going to help me with your fucking 20 years of life experience? Shut the fuck up, you little whippersnapper. Get the fuck out of my face. Go find me an adult. I, I know, racist, sexist, homophobic. I don't give a shit. You're a fucking 20-year-old kid. You have no life experience. How the fuck are you going to help other people? How are you going to fucking help other people with your 20 fucking years of brainwashing? Dwayne Hansen, a student staff member for ALVS, submitted an internal complaint against Cydric over the order. Quote, the issue that we took with the executive order is that there was a lot of rhetoric and inflammatory language that was included. Unquote. It was inflammatory language. My feelings, my feelings are, and what's more important, what's more important, providing services to adult learners and veterans or the feelings of a 20-year-old college student? Well, clearly, the feelings of a 20-year-old college student are much more important than assessing whether or not the adult learner and veteran services office is providing useful, legitimate, effective assistance to adult learners and veterans, right? Clearly, that is not as important as the feelings of a 20-year-old college student because, after all, this is the smartest generation ever and they are 100% committed to fixing climate change and putting gender-neutral signs on bathrooms and all the other truly important things in life. And their feelings, their feelings really matter. Their feelings are very important. And if people keep violating their feelings, I think we're going to have to pass a law. Hansen submitted the complaint representing some students associated with the ALVS office on August 18th. So again, his complaint was submitted representing some students. Okay? that No adults, students. Quote, when you include language in there that says we have already failed our mission before the task force is even created, we take issue with that. It was almost like an insult. <laughs> it was almost like an insult, except it was actually the truth. Everyone that works in this office works very hard to serve all of these people, and that's part of what was missed in the president's thinking in the executive order, unquote, Hansen said. Cydric said the language used had a different purpose, although he has since rescinded the order because he's a great big vagina. Quote, the language I used I don't think is unprofessional. I was using it to perk ears of the administration, but it did come off a little bit abrasive, and I apologize for that. The biggest thing is that I didn't talk to everyone. I just want to explain my reasoning to everyone in the ALVS office, unquote. Cydric whined as he begged for forgiveness because I didn't talk to everybody and I just want to explain my feelings to you. I'm so, I'm so sorry I offended you. I'm so sorry that I almost had a ball sack. I, I, I almost accomplished something with my worthless little life as the president of the ASCSU. I almost did something again. enough of that. Vigil held in remembrance of Matthew Shepard. I'm skipping a lot of stuff here. While it was argued that the attack began over a drug dispute, it became clear through media coverage that this was a hate crime. I find that sentence interesting. For those of you not in the know, and 
I, you may not know this if you're in another country or whatever. Matthew Shepard was, and here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, we're just under, we're just south of Wyoming, and somewhere up in Wyoming, I think it was in, I think it was near outside Laramie, Larimer, Laramie, Larimer. I could be wrong. You can. Matthew Shepard into Google, you'll find out everything you want to know. Anyhow, Matthew Shepard was a gay man who was abducted or, you know, maybe willingly went with him, whatever. Two other men got Matthew Shepard in their vehicle. They took him out in the country. They physically assaulted him and killed him and tied him to a barbed wire fence. He was, excuse me, they didn't kill him at the time. They physically assaulted him and tied him to a barbed wire fence. He was found by a passerby, and Matthew Shepard was brought to Poudre Valley Hospital here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins, which was a fantastic media coup for Poudre Valley Hospital, and they milked the living fuck out of that. The CEO at the time was Rulon Stacy. I actually worked there at the time when this happened. And he fucking, he got his face all over television. He loved every moment of that. He's a scumbag. And anyway, Matthew Shepard then subsequently did die at the hospital because these two assholes beat the shit out of him that badly. Now, of course, again, anarcho-capitalist society where you don't initiate aggression against other people, this wouldn't happen because people would recognize initiating aggression as wrong and also because Matthew Shepard probably would have had a fucking gun and been able to defend himself. But anyway, we need the state because the state protects people from this sort of stuff, which is odd because this stuff still happens despite the assertion of statist that without the government, homosexuals would get beat up and tied to barbed wire fences, and yet the state exists and homosexuals get beat up. And anyway, so I never heard any part about, because I didn't follow, I never followed news. I didn't know it, but there was any theorizing that it was over a drug dispute. But despite all of that, what's interesting about this sentence is that where it says, it became clear through media coverage that this was a hate crime. So the media had to present it in a way that made it a hate crime. But of course, the media has no biases. And of course, hate crimes don't create victims, which don't lead to more statism and which, of course, don't lead to money-making opportunities for lots and lots of people. I've talked about the whole victim industrial complex before, and I need to hurry up because, as Randy's indicating, we're running out of time. All right, quote. So there's a bunch of people. They're holding a vigil, and by a bunch, I mean like 10. They're holding a vigil in remembrance of Matthew Shepard. Quote, CSU, who is this? Kimberly Chambers, Northern Colorado Pride. No, that's not who's saying this. Who's saying this? I'm trying to figure out who this quote's coming from. Somebody named Craig Chapin. I know, I know I'm running out of time. Thank you. I, I love you. Stop talking. All right, it doesn't say. Anyway, quote, CSU and the community really stepped up, Chapin said, about the incident with a CSU fraternity and sorority on campus soon after Shepard's death. The students created a float for the university's homecoming parade that displayed a scarecrow tied to a fence. Although Chapin believes the women did not, the, the women, although Chapin believes the students did not do this to be disrespectful, he said he is glad CSU recognized the significance and impact of this act. So these students on this float had a scarecrow tied to a fucking barbed wire fence. Now, I don't know what the rest of the float looked like. Did it fit in? Did it not fit in? But again, notice how these people, oh my God, there's a scarecrow on a fence. And the reason it's significant is that the person who found Matthew Shepard tied to the fence said that initially he thought it was a scarecrow. And so he like almost passed by. And then I believe he was a bicyclist. And then he realized it was a person, not a scarecrow. So again, we see the victimhood mentality that, oh my God, these students made a float with a scarecrow on it. This must be an attempt to victimize people. This must be. It couldn't possibly just be that they have a fucking theme for their float that would include a scarecrow and they needed to support the scarecrow and since the fence was already there, instead of adding another support for the scarecrow, just tie the scarecrow to the fucking fence because the fence is already there and you don't have to use more lumber, you know, more resources that contribute to global warming and all this other shit. But no, see, it's all about me. It's all about victimhood. It's all about wham, 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 wham. 
Those gathered at the vigil recognized that the LGBT KKK community has a long way to go in terms of equality, but many said they are hopeful for the future. Well, especially since CSU is focusing on important things like putting gender neutral signs on the bathrooms so that members of the LGBT KKK group can figure out which bathroom to go to and don't have to get urinary tract infections because figuring out that whole urinating thing, that is really... Do you realize humans are the only animals on the planet Earth that can't figure out where to urinate at? Dogs, cats, cows, sheep, pigs, ravens, vultures, starfish, salmon, they can all figure out how to urinate. They don't need a sign and a fucking task force and a committee to figure out urinating. Again, natural selection, complete fucking failure. The human species has become so stupid, so incapacitated, they can't even perform bodily functions without regulations and oversight from other humans. In 2009, a federal hate crime law was expanded outlawing hate crimes directed at the LGBT KKK community. Right, because again, remember, if you kill somebody, it's wrong. But if you kill somebody because you don't like LGBT KKKers, well, now you're way more wrong. See, killing, see, everybody is equal, but some people are more equal. Some people's lives are worth more. And those people, if you kill them, well, now you're going to be in really big trouble because some people are better than other people. Quote, you never know who you're interacting with, especially when you're dealing with hidden identity such as sexual preference. It's important to be accepting, unquote, according to an LGBT KKK Resource Center statement. Quote, whether you're queer, questioning, or somewhere in between, it's important for everyone to feel safe in their community. And, Matthew sh and Matthew's community specifically highlights the importance of being authentic. Unquote. Unless, of course, you're a heterosexual white man who works for a living, then you should not be authentic because you are racist, sexist, and homophobic. So yes, regardless of whether you're queer questioning or somewhere in between, even though these things are all social constructs, it's important to feel safe. Because what's the most important thing in our society? No white woman must ever feel discomfort. And since men, the LGBT KKK society, all this is all feminized. All of this is becoming feminized. All of this is beginning to revolve around the cult of feelings. And none of these people, even though people are a social construct, none of these people must ever experience any emotional discomfort or else we're going to have to pass a law.